Hey guys, so we are in Punta del Diablo on the coast of Uruguay, the department Rocha. And we are here enjoying a lovely workaway experience which we want to talk to you about, kind of show you around the town and even show you a little bit of the Santa Teresa National Park. Which is right next to here, so check it out. All right. Okay. So first things first, why did we come to Punta del Diablo? Why did we decide to be here at the point of the devil? Well, we were actually very lucky and we got a really cool work away where we're helping these folks build cabanas. Really, we've been just painting and watching them build. Are you worth anything more than paint? Yo soy el pintero. ¿Qué necesitas? <laughs> but it's been really, really special special and insightful because we would like to do the same one day. Yes, that is a dream. We will build a house of some sort together yes. one day. What brought us here was a work away, but also we like to explore not just the capitals of cities, of cities. I will help. We like to explore not only the big cities, but we like to go to the hidden spots that usually aren't on the tourist travels routes. Uruguay is not that big of a country so it's not that hard to get out of the capital but you will be very impressed at the different societies and culture and uniqueness that you will find once you leave the capital Montevideo. <laughs> this area is not only really beautiful for nature but the lifestyle that people have made here is something that we loved we almost we literally almost yeah. bought land here all of this land is for sale and it's not that expensive when you think about having the beach at your view as well as being where there's not so many people so this place has 2,000 people in the winter right a stable population in the summer that changes to 35,000 and with reason it's gorgeous because this is a beautiful place the beaches are basically virgin in the sense that there's no big resorts or hotels it's just these small low-level homes that are mostly just built by whoever the owner is and it's a simple living lifestyle. You have the beauty of the beach and woods working together. And so it's easy to get lost in the simple living lifestyle. So there's a really strong trend here of people kind of buying their land and making their homes. You see houses of all different styles. Some of them are like really eco-friendly. Some are just made to be complete luxury. <laughs> And mostly, I think this is because of the tourism here, so it's a good opportunity for anyone looking to buy some land. So if you want to be our neighbor, comment in the drop box, nice. but not drop box, comment in the comment section below <laughs> and we can talk some business. Part of staying or being in Punta del Diablo is accepting that you are pretty isolated. Yeah. And so, if you are missing the wonders of capitalism, you have to get yourself to... Alright, he's leaving. You have to get yourself to a town that's on the border of Brazil and Uruguay, which is called Chuy. It sits half in Brazil, half in Uruguay. It's not always convenient getting public transportation. So we're going to do the good old thumb and try to hitch a ride over to Chuy to get our grocery shopping done and to get some other good capitalist things. Projection. It hurts, guys, but you need some of that. It's good for the soul. These are the two cool people that picked us up. Buenas tardes. Just like that, we crossed from Uruguay to Brazil and into capitalism. Apart from being close to this Brazilian slash Uruguayan town, we sit in between all of these beautiful free national parks. Right next to Punta del Diablo is a park called Santa Teresa and Andrea and I actually rented some bikes, some electric bikes. You ready to go for a ride? Oh, I'm ready, baby. 
Parks Rock and Roll. We are taking our awesome electric bikes into the Santa Teresa Park and we are going to do a full tour and we're not even going to use any energy. So you still think you know me just like I know you should. I cannot give you everything you know I wish I could. I'm so high at the moment. I'm so caught up in this. Yeah, we're just young, dumb, and broke, but we still got love to give. While we're young, dumb, young, young, dumb, and broke. Young, dumb, young, young, dumb, and broke. Young, dumb, young, young, dumb, and broke. Young, dumb, broke high school kids. Yes, it was pretty cool, and of course, we wouldn't have been able to do it if it had not been for this super cool guy named. Rolly, who rented us these electric bikes. If you want information on that, you can just comment below and we'll get it for you. Yes. Right next to Santa Teresa, you then have this enormous lake called Laguna Negra. We actually were able to take the bikes not only to Santa Teresa, but also to Laguna Negra in one day. Yeah, so it is really worth it and it's so cool because yeah. they go like at least 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. <laughs> We're starting to think in kilometers. We are starting to think kilometers. Hold on, wow. allergies. Did you hear that bird? In our free time, because with this work away, luckily we've had lots of it, we do the obvious and we go to the beach. It's that way. There are about four beaches here that are really, really pretty and my favorite was Playa Grande. Um, that is the one to the left that borders Santa Teresa Park. And this beach is like, I'm gonna think in kilometers, three kilometers long. Yeah? I have no idea. <laughs> and there's virtually no people there. In the summer, probably a lot of people. But right now, no. Um, so it's a great place to go and do some exercise or just have a picnic. Go for a run. Go whale watching. Yes, whales pass by here. Honestly, aside from that, I mean, we had lots of barbecues or asados. Mm -hmm. We had some of our own where I was the asador. <laughs> uh, we had our host Ciao. actually have an uh, asados for us as well. I mean, our time was constantly partaking in Uruguayan meat. Meat and experiences. Wine. Experiences. And friends. Yeah. <laughs> we are here at the end, but another cool thing to keep in mind if you come to Punta del Diablo is that every Saturday at Pueblo Arriba Hostel, there is a market selling artisan beer, empanadas, bread, there's coffee, there's music, it's pretty cool. Every Saturday, so it doesn't matter, rain, wind, summer, fire, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Really, Punta del Diablo is just a very good place to spend your time. So if you ever find yourself in Uruguay, catch a bus to the Rocha department and give our fellow friends a hello. Hello. <laughs> what if on a ladder? The question is, is this safe? <laughs> that hairdo is not safe. <laughs> we are so lucky with this work away. We were able to only work four hours a day. That no ain't nothing. Normally it's five. And that extra hour. <laughs> yeah, it's been really cool. And it's been pretty chill of work. Mm -hmm. um, like Tony said... I think Tony said, we are staying at a host who ha just has this big lot of land and is making cabanas. And we're kind of... Seven to be exact. Seven. And they're just like little mini homes. And we've been helping paint more than anything. They've been showing me a little tips here and there on how to how I can make my own cabana in the future. And it's been really cool because uh, these things you don't get to learn very easily. You either have to 
pay someone to teach you yeah. or pay someone you know, to do like it that. for you. So that's so. why workaway is great. You know, that's the point of this thing is to have an exchange, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, like you said, we've just been working outside more than anything, painting outside yeah. and getting to live in this one of the beautiful cabanas that he has that has everything we need. It's cool. Wi-Fi, kitchen, privacy, everything. And we want to show you around. Check out the room. Bit. Look so at this. This is our little, little loft room. It's cute. Let's take him downstairs. I'll grab the camera. I will be your tour guide for today. Oh. This is cute. <laughs>